Paul Thorne, Robert Clark, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for its defense, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Paul. Mr. Gordon Out. Here. Mr. Gray. Here. Mr. Holmes. Here. Mr. Miller. Here. Mr. Paris. Here. Mr. Fernandez. You have a quorum. Okay. I don't think there's anybody on the public side. Is Robert Will here? No. Okay. All right. So, can I have a motion to approve the June 13th, 2023 regular meeting minutes? Make a motion to approve the minutes of the June 13, 2023 regular meeting. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, new business? Oh, you're you're all part of it. Thank you. I appreciate uh, being first on the list. So, I can get that to the kids, so thank you for that. Um, so I did prepare a Rosha and I met. And Arosha and Kevin spoke a bit and were able to create a couple of items for you. So if you've been able to take a look at those at all, and if you have questions or if it doesn't make sense as to the information you're looking for, we can certainly edit that. Um, These would be the three pages immediately following the minutes. So check the pie chart, the one after, and then the, the spreadsheet. Well, from my perspective, it's, it's not only for us, it's, it's a tool for you. Oh, yeah, no, no. I just want to make sure I'm hitting all the points that you want. But yeah, this is definitely a nice overview that I can share with my board and share with staff that isn't too complex. It's a nice just overview of everything, I think. But I wanted to make sure we were hitting all of the important parts that you were interested in. want to quickly take this through it? Yeah, sure. Um, so the first one is just the total number of patients cared for in that month. This will be created as a monthly report. Uh, we do have about a 60 day lag because when we start somebody, um, they have a 60 day period and we don't know what the cost is gonna be until the services are done. Sometimes reimbursement changes a little bit, sometimes reimbursement's based on the amount of visits. So we don't always know until after that 60 day period. So there is like a two month lag um, of information. So it just to keep you forewarned when you get these, there'll be two months, you know, in the rear um, for the month that we look at it. So the total number of patients, just to see, you know, month to month, how we're doing, how many patients we're taking care of. Uh, the second part is just how many referrals did we get? And how many did we accept? How many did we decline? And we look at, you know, why did we decline? A lot of it is they're just not in our territory. Um, sometimes it's an insurance issue. Sometimes they're just not a good fit for our agency and what we want. So where are the referrals typically coming from? So a lot of the referrals, the majority, I, I created one for March, but I didn't bring it in because I know we were just kind of looking at the data. So our top three for March were um, Hospital Central Connecticut and New Britain, which is probably our one of our largest referrers as a local hospital. The second was UConn, uh, which we have plans to, to work with them a bit. And then the third one was, I believe, Autumn Lake, which is a nursing facility in like the New Britain uh, area. So we're gonna monitor those referral sources and see where are we getting the most referrals. Also, just as a courtesy, sending thank you cards to you know, maybe our top three referral sources. Thank you for you know sending patients our way. Um, just a nicety, I think it goes a long way. And then the number of new episodes of care. So that will be for any new starts of care or anybody who has finished their 60 day initial period and needs another episode a recertification somebody who's going to continue beyond the initial 60 days <clears throat> so that will be broken down as to starts of care and recertifications and that's important because the reimbursement can decline in some insurances in the second episode so you know we don't want to have to research unless there's an actual true 
skill group to do so. So it's good to just keep an eye on how many research are we doing versus discharges and research versus studies. So the next is just a nice visual that you know we can monitor the green portions. The green are the the better payers, the better reimbursement sources. The oranges and yellow and red are obviously the lower paying um, sources. So we just want to make sure that this pie chart is more and more green um, and just seeing where those insurances are falling. Do you and set the rate on private pay? You're one of the worst payers. Private pay is bad because of, I would say, maybe culture of the agency that we don't actually charge the full charge. And we have like certain limits based on like Medicare regulations as to what we can charge. So we can't charge like a thousand dollars a visit, not that we would do that, but you know, they have certain limitations, but the culture of the agency prior to my time, and maybe it's something we need to revisit is that they charge $35 for a home healthy visit, and that's the only portion that patients get charged. They don't get charged a complimentary nursing visit, which is obviously the expensive part. So we may have to revisit that practice. Um, but we'll, we'll we, decide whether you revisit that practice. Well, you're saying we may revisit that. So right that. now we have four patients <clears throat> who are Berlin residents on the private pay. We're not opening it up to anybody else. And I just would kind of hate to knock people out of being able to afford this service some, if we charge them. The correct money. me if I'm mistaken, but some of these folks are uh, personal heights, very low income individuals who would, would otherwise have no recourse for basic home health, aid, basic elements like yeah. bathing and things like yeah. that. Yeah. So these are really, you know, needy in the sense of that they don't have another option. So I think the thought from the agency perspective was to keep it affordable for the regular person. But do you have the wherewithal to like set a rate and then make adjustments based on need at all? Versus like say we're not we're gonna avoid private pay because we're at this low rate and it's not cost effective. But let's say you set the rate at whatever it may be, something at Medicaid rate Medicare rates, and then you Whatever based yeah. on need. I don't know if that's allowable or not, but if that it, would be well, more private pay, I, you know, you have the ability to to change those rates, but I just was worried about the it's four people, the well, four I people that we have. I but, understand that. No, and I understand. Is there <laughs> is there a mechanism to allow for that, but yet not? So you don't cut that potential source off. Yeah. Well, one I thing that look at it, I would ask. Yeah, I mean, we can certainly look at that and let's look at the impact. What can we ask these people to pay? Well, how can we adjust it to make it a more, you know, financial friendly thing? But another part is that these are people who are going to be on long term with us, you know, and it doesn't, it holds up the schedule for the other patients. If you get what I'm saying, like I don't want to grow the private pay. I'd rather grow the insurance piece. If that makes sense. Um, but we did, on a good note, we received um, the Marjorie Moore grant, which affects Kensington only residents. It doesn't affect every patient we have on private pay, but we'll be able to charge the full like Medicare rate, like you're speaking of. Um, and the patient will pay 35, and the grant will pay back the thing. So it's only for Kensington. It's a little bit limited in the use of the grant, but we have that and the funds are yours until they're exhausted through that, you know, purpose of that. So that should last us quite a while. I mean, maybe we can open up to people who fall under the grant to have more private pay for them if we needed it. Um, the only hindrance to that is also they are more home healthy Based. They get one nursing visit every 60 days just to keep the orders up, but they're getting a home health aid maybe twice a week. And with the cut in AIDS, we really can't accommodate more long term type of patients. So that's why we haven't really looked at ending the rate. We're kind of phasing it out. Um, okay, then moving on, unless you guys have questions. 
So then the average monthly patient reimbursement, I just take the reimbursement for all patients. And what is our average of that? Just to keep track of kind of, you know, what are our trends on the averages of that? And the next portion will actually pretty much come from the third page. And I'll just pull the numbers into this sheet. Just on the reimbursement, you're saying that's the average reimbursement per patient for the month. Yeah, I'm just interested in what that number is, what that looks like. Is that compared to the average cost you're spending for each patient for the month? Yeah, I mean, we definitely, yeah. Well, what, but, is, yeah. what is your day actual cost means? I don't know. What, you know are you comparing, comparing, comparing reimbursement average yes. to an actual cost that you're spending for that patient? Yeah, I'm just interested in like what that average is because it kind of shows us that we're bumping up in um, better reimbursements. But yeah, it would be based, it would be a comparison between the reimbursement and the cost just as, a, as an average. I, I just thought that was an interesting thing to look at, but it might not be necessary, which is maybe interesting. Is um, that not a value to look at by category? Nurses, PT, OT, home health care aides. So actually on the second part, I have more about utilization. Is that what you're asking about? I'm just looking at, you know, you, you may look at this in an aggregate, it may not actually tell you a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And you might be doing really well on visiting nursing reimbursement, mm -hmm. doing part of on OT reimbursements. Mm -hmm. It tells you we got an issue there. Mm -hmm. When you lump everything together and all gets blended together, you don't really get very clear indicators on where specific problem maybe so yeah the problem with that is that would be manual okay. and very i mean i could try it for a month and just see you know well, how long does it actually take okay. i could try it now. the more you can you know jerry and i talked to you guys before don't want you to do a whole don't want a full-time job doing the, the, this yeah. metrics yeah. i mean what like i look for ways for you automate it as best you can so maybe there's some that would be a different software. get a fancy uh yeah that would be a different you know, get, a, get a fancy excel google in here and whatever and that, that would be kind well of i've got a pretty extensive excel on there already but putting the numbers into the excel is manual like i'm yeah, pulling out of our anything. system and put we're very limited with the system right. that we have All right yeah we're so, trying to find another one but out of your billing system it doesn't break it down like that. They it just gives us like a total reimbursement. But let me meet with Marlo and maybe we can dig through. Maybe we can have you come down and dig through the billing software that we have. Maybe there's something we're missing. You I know, just think that would give you a lot more insight. You know, so I mean, telling you like your money is in health and healthcare aids, and that's where we should make you make an investment versus. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I'm just so kidding. our therapists are all contracted. And the reimbursements are more than what we pay. Right. So we we get more reimbursement than we pay on our therapists because they're per diem. So the real weight is in our in our benefited staff is where it really is. And then also we have well, we three people, including myself in the office, that we're not out generating revenue because we're working in the office. So you know, we have to make up for those three people. But that should, be, that should be a, a loader. Yeah. Well, you do. did give me some numbers that were fully loaded numbers. So that's what I've been using for my calculation. We'll have to see if those changed a little bit with the new budget. But we, we did decompose mm -hmm. the reimbursement rates by type and by insurance provider. The challenge becomes the actual revenue coming in. In other words, we don't go to Medicare and say, well, we spent this much on OT, PT. No, they just give you a lump sum. They don't for the case, give you buckets, yeah. Case. yeah. That's Medicare only. The other ones, um, the optimum low care pays the same. Anthem, Aetna, United, CCPI, Medicaid, and private pay are all based on the number of visits. So Medicare, we get buckets. And it's you have to use this responsibly for your agency, and the other is a rate per visit. Well, we can definitely look through it and see because we do know the cost structure yeah. that we have in there. It's just trying to figure out how to marry in the the actual utilization by patient to then be able to match that. And I guess what I'm calculating out my 
my reimbursement costs, I'm like, you know, writing it down with the calculator and everything. So I guess I could just make a note in the Excel or something. And <laughs> somehow. As long as we don't break anything, I can spell. <laughs> I'll take the names. <laughs> um, so then the next page just has the monthly in town versus out of town cost of care versus revenue for both of those. And then staff utilization. So I wanted to find out, you know, how are we really doing in regard to utilizing the staff that we have? Are we being as productive as possible? So full capacity. So units are basically visits. However, certain visits take more time and are considered like more visits. So like an initial so, visit. If you can understand that. <laughs> So like a, a regular visit might be 30, 45, an hour, an hour, 15, a start of care visit is gonna be half a day, uh, you know, then the home and, and paperwork after. So it counts as one units. Regular visits one, start of care is three. So we'll just see how we do based on the five day work week and everyone being here. Um, obviously, we can make notes as to why we were short on productivity. Maybe somebody's on vacation that week, and you know we don't meet full productivity because of a vacation. Um, so we can make notes there and just monitor the productivity of the staff. And then the last part is going to be our outreach efforts. So any marketing that we do, we'll track when and where, and then you know, the outcome. Did we seem to get more phone calls based on this? Did we seem to get more referrals from the source we went to and, and just monitoring? And since we sent the brochures out with the tax uh, bill, we've already gotten like five or six calls. They don't always go somewhere, but people are remembering we're here and calling in. So it's good. And then another benefit is there's a school in Berlin, Prism, um, which is not part of the regular school district, and they reached out to us to provide contract and nursing services, and that is expected to bring some revenue. Which, which will be okay. Is that the autism? Yes. You yeah. more than school students. Yeah. Okay. So you assign one person to them or yep. something like that? So we have a per diem nurse who likes to do kind of our odd jobs. And she was with a student who ended up phasing out of the program in the regular school district and you know didn't have a new assignment and the prism came up. So it worked out perfect for her. She's per diem, so she's not benefited. It doesn't cost us as much to send her. So we're getting better reimbursement. So pays for that? Prism themselves are contracted and going to pay us for that. Are they a nonprofit or are they part of? They're not the part of the, or? no, they're not part of the Board of Ed. They're their own. They lead or pilots? Yeah. And that'll be a bonus. I, I have a question back to the, the uh, first page, first okay. item. Um, on the number of patients cared for, is that going to break down between in town and out of town? I can. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. And like all of the other metrics we have, I was going to start filling it out and start working with it. Little it iterate that you okay. need to, you know. There's things that you don't find useful, they can come off if there's other things you want to see. Sure, just like the other stuff we've been out of in. Let's start. Yeah, it's a good start. It is. Is <laughs> this coming right off your system? It is. Uh, it's, you know, they're, they're actuals within. I produce a PL for Aliyah and Roche every month. So it looks year to date so we can see year over year how we're trending. This incorporates budget into that and we'll be able to provide. I, I just wanted to make sure she didn't have to generate. No, I don't. Thank it's, you for <laughs> thanks for looking out for it. <laughs> no, thank no. thank goodness finance gives that to us. That's right out of our core systems. Okay. So does any of it not make sense or too vague or missing anything? No, I think that um, there's not too much detail. Yeah. There's enough for us to 
okay. we'll look at the metric and then as we move along, we say, this is not helping you. And it's not helping us. Then you can take it out or do yeah. something different. Yeah, or, definitely. That, so. that works. Yeah, I mean, we'll just have a discussion about it. I don't know how often you want to meet. I mean, well, I can certainly send it over to Kevin yeah, or to yeah, the board. The plan is to um, meet quarterly with you. Yep. So, yep, yeah, it's a good um, practice. So, so for good. example, every quarter, the close yep. of the quarter, we'll do the following month meeting. So, you know, July to September is a quarter. You can present in October. So, That's it's going to be two months delayed so i won't have like the end of september data until november maybe we do start by but i can show we can show what what's prior and where we are up to up to now yeah. it may not be i mean we're going to go quarterly anyway so you're going to you're going to see it in the yeah, yeah. It's i think it's defined the periods the that end. the data is in what period does it go through and then yeah. it'll just keep extending out yeah. If, yeah. if i might suggest that we I mean, generally we don't meet that in august but we don't really want to wait until two months from now if we could get one of these reports filled in before our september meetings so we could look at it and discuss it at our you know, to see if there's any other tweaks we want to make before we start going. Okay. You know, we can talk about it at our September meeting. And that will be a two month delay on the information. Yeah, because so, and it's like two months from like the end of the month to the end of the second month, because if we get a patient on the 31st, they're not going to be closed out potentially until the end of the second month. So it's. So it's a, it's a delay. Mm -hmm. So what we would be looking at for August meeting would be basically through that. Yeah. Yeah. June, right? July. Partial. It might be partial June. Partial. There may be people who are not discharged. Well, yeah, it's probably it makes this block yeah. out in one month, it's just so we know what we're looking at. That's yeah. what yeah. we make a sort of so we're yeah. gonna have one month beginning to end. I can get you yeah. something for yeah, yeah. 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 For August, we're, yeah. Just, we're just saying, you yeah. know. By the end of August, we'll have June June stuff. Yes. Ready. Yes. So maybe that be the first one that we do, so yeah. that we get that data. Yeah. For our September meeting. Yeah, that works. I move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, that works. Good. Thank you for your reference. <laughs> Appreciate it. That Thanks. It? Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Mark, you didn't have anything, did you? Or? Oh yeah. Sorry. I do not. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. I mean, if you want, I can fill one out for the last month of cleared out. I know April is closed. May should be able to be closed up. So I could send like a March, April, May. Just well, to have meetings look at it. August will probably be pretty brief. More yeah. about moving capital. Well, you can send an email to review yeah. on your own yeah. time. Yeah. You want. That would be good. Sure. And we meet. We'll, yeah, well, it's good use to look at it. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and then that way, if it is kind of missing something or or useless information, then we can you know set all that up for September and move it on what we okay. want to do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, so Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Have a great night. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Right, and um, for the new business, I so have a motion on that too. Uh, move to transfer $57,500 as detailed in the company spreadsheets to cover higher than budget and expenditures in the identified accounts. Second. Second. Discussion? Vote in favor? Aye. Aye. I think you said aye, right? Mark? Aye. <laughs> all right. All right, go to item three. Um, all right. So last meeting, you guys had talked about looking at somewhat similar format to what we had last year. So hopefully it's not too much of an eye chart, but uh, trying to put it all on, on one page. So at the top part, we have the audited general fund unassigned fund balance from the 630-2022 Act for and then from there, we had a series of uses of that fund balance. Last year, there was an appropriation of 50% of the fire vehicle, some personal field funding for renovating that field. 
and police station renovation work. That was for the architectural side. In addition, in the middle of the year, both the Council and Board of Finance approved appropriating a million dollars for the purchase of the Atkins Street property over by Crystal Creek. Um, going below is a projection right now, receipts and expenditures, where we would see the gross um, surplus. And then I'll just quickly skip to the bottom, which tried to very high level give you the breakdown of well, how did we end up at that point with roughly $5.3 million of a surplus. Biggest driver of that by far was interest earnings. We were able to pretty effectively follow as the Fed raised rates combined with the fact that we had five and a half million dollars of ARPA money, which the Feds did allow interest to remain with the municipality. Uh, we also had $5 million partly through the year that was uh, given to the town as pre-funding of the Lots of Road project. That's the Demi Road, Christian Lane, Porter's Pass Road. So that money sitting in the bank account, ARPA for basically the entire year and the other for a few months, um, in addition to just the natural timing of collecting about 60% of our taxes in July and August and paying out through the year, allowed us to make about a Roughly, I would estimate $2 million in interest. Um, we had additional taxes. We had a successful tax sale. We had the motor vehicle cap. If you recall, we weren't sure whether there's going to be a cap. And so that this year's budget, we did not assume that. We received $370,000. And so that really is a good guy in the budget. The NA, unfortunately, has had a revenue shortfall within a, a range of other smaller items. On the expenditure side, we did still have some personnel. The, anybody who works in the police force can attest to the fact that there was a significant shortfall there, partially offset by substantially higher overtime, but nonetheless savings. Some townwide electricity savings, some contractual services savings, and then a whole range of other items. Kevin, and on the first one, town personnel, it says schools. Is that R61? Yes. Or is that for the Not us. Yes. That's uh, 61. This assumes no surplus from the Board of Ed. That doesn't mean the Board of Ed won't have a surplus returning. I'm just not assuming anything. Um, they did not request anything from the 2% fund. So at this point, I'm assuming that it will all be spent. But again, that's not inside information or anything. It's just a big assumption. Well, the cost report has almost a $700,000 favorable budget balance. It does. I can tell you over the last couple of weeks, there's been substantial um, the activity that we've received since that time. I don't expect that number to be anything of significance, but that's pretty important that to speak to. So that just kind of gave you a flavor of where we came out with about $5.3 million. I took basically this 810,000 is saying the use of fund balance and then offsetting that against the receipts that we had that we took in would leave you a net of about $810,000. While we appropriated money at the beginning of the year, and again, for Atkins Street, the favorability more than offset that. Um, and then there's favorability projected in expenditures. We do still have, this was done before this week's, and we have next week for invoices coming in. So there will still be some more coming through. Um, you did appropriate to shy $743,000 in the FY24 budget for the closed pension plan. So that's not the new police plan. The 548, I will commit it, I will admit is conservative, but the police force is making some really nice headway in hiring. They are getting a lot of good feedback from folks and they're getting candidates that they, the chief and his leadership team were hoping to start seeing with the pension and with the momentum. Um, I think it's possible, at least probably through the year, that you're going to see that up to 46. And you'll recall the budget only have 42. So that is intended to kind of take into account you using likely using some fund balance. That would bring you down to just shy of $15 million against the $99.6 million budget or 15% of the budget. That's a very reasonable and appropriate fund balance. However, we also have, as we talked about the last few years, equally compelling capital needs. So I took the first two sections of the capital that you saw in the budget. There is one item that was removed from the second bucket and that those were doors at the high school. They were removed because the facilities director and his team were able to do that with existing CNR money. And so the doors at the high school were addressed 
So it wasn't that they were taken out because we wanted to remove them, take out because they were taken care of. Um, you know, fully funding that, assuming everything remains where it is with the operating surplus, would be one million seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is more than was proposed the budget and more than was removed, but it would address that whole first group that was in that was on the list, and it would address police vehicles. The um, we have vital records and the cloud clerk is just simply running out of space. We have to reconfigure between assessor and town clerk to create space in a vaulted and fire suppressed area so we don't lose we have land records that go back many, many years. Um, I know there was a, a question, could we incorporate some, uh, at least one of the playgrounds? I know Steve Wood will be coming down after his agenda item is there, but he and I spoke about if you were gonna look between the Willard playground and Little People's. Um, he leaned towards the Little People's. Willard's important, but the feeling was to address a playground that's off school grounds, which would allow more people access all day. There's limitations, obviously, you can't just let people wander to school grounds. So that was part of the reason of landing there. And then lastly, uh, track snow machine. That's the small machine that helps them pick up snow. They have it out here. They use it at the schools. It's really helpful to quickly and efficiently clear the sidewalks, the stairs, and other things helps reopen schools, town hall, and other things. Um, he would like to have a second one so that he can leave one here in the shed and clear the grounds here much faster, while also sending somebody over to clear the schools and again to get them reopened. Um, I have the full list if you want me to pull it up, but this was to, to at least have the conversation about where you would end up. If you did all of that, and again, if the year closed out as expected, and conservatively looking at the potential of having to appropriate for police staffing, we'd still leave you with about 13.2 million, 13.3%, or you know, compared to the audited number, up a couple hundred thousand dollars, essentially flat fund balance while addressing several critical uh, needs. They deal with vehicles, they deal with schools, they deal with public safety, they deal with playgrounds and recreations. That, I, just, uh, I just want to comment. Um, I was told, you know, I spoke to Donna Beach, and um, apparently the grant money didn't go through for the police station, so it didn't go through. You know, so, um, so that's you know something out there. Um, so we already discussed the possibility of having a bond as yeah, well. I just want people to know. I just want people to know. And at least for this fiscal year, we don't have to worry about the two other schools yet for the HVAC or do we? No, the um, school did hear back from the Department of Energy, Federal Department of Energy, and, and Berlin did not get that grant either. The state is supposed to be opening up the second round of those grants in August. If the last round is any indication, I would think it would be at the tail end of this fiscal year at best. It just did take several months to go through it, announce it, and go with it. But the school's going to try for that as well. But through the fiscal year, would we have to do anything for those two? No. Um, I mean, there's potential that we had to do additional consulting work, but you'd be talking small, not project, actually. It would be good if somebody laid out a total schedule for all three schools so that, <laughs> that you know, you know that even getting a final proposal, whatever, what's the timeline? So, I mean, I'm used to seeing milestones, you know, those kind of things to say, Here's when things are supposed to happen so that at least we can get better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the pandemic in the middle of it. So well, I mean, so, the whole thing up. so it'd just be nice to have an overall plan for the HVAC for all three schools. I know that we're working, you know, Willard right now. Uh, and then I don't know where we stand with the police station itself in terms of. I did reach out to, to Mike Hearns at the public works director because the initial timeline was uh, go out with the RFP in May, open an award in June, start construction in July. We did clear out the old port of ed storage area um, to, to be prepared for that. The drawings are still in the works. Um, they are looking, the interior work specs and drawings are done with the PBC for review scheduled to be discussed at this Thursday's meeting, so in two days. So they are still reviewing the specs. Um, I know that they are, they're adjusting a little bit for some sanitary connections for a new oil separator from trench drains in the Sally Port. Essentially, I guess if oil leaks out of any of the vehicles that went into the Sally Port, almost like what you have in the, the wash bay. 
Um, so you separate out the oil from the water. Um, so that is, I know, some redesign work. Uh, you know, there's a lot of questions. I know Mike's getting a lot of questions on where are we with this thing? Again, because of the initial timing, they're still working through it. So there's no target for getting the RFP out? I haven't heard one, but I know he's going to bring it up at Thursday's meeting and have to say, well, where, where do we see this? Um, there's no different the age back. There should be a plan on this too. So, you know, get, well, where, where are the increments that we have to worry about? You know? I mean, yeah. we're going to hire a consultant as a project manager. Is that true? The plan had a, um, uh, I want to say captain, but that's not what it is. A, uh, it kind of somebody to oversee, but not really project manage. I, I, my personal opinion, I think that's a dangerous proposition, but, um, you know, if, if, not that the staff is bad in any way, but to try to manage the day to days and a project of this significance, especially with moving pieces, um, it really something's going to fall either on the, the ongoing side or the uh, project side. Um, so I think that's just further discussion for that. Yeah, that's one of the milestones on who's going to manage this thing. <laughs> I mean, this is really stuff that should be laid off, you know. If yeah, they're already, I mean, I who's, who's running it now? I mean, who who's the key uh, focal point? Of it? There isn't one. Um, you can say it, there's a couple, I would okay. say, and I, I've asked the question a couple times. So I think um, I, I used to have an old uh, CEO who said, "I want one throat, one throat to choke." There's a lot of people going to work on something, but I want one. <laughs> you are the person. You can have all the rewards, but you're the one I come after when it goes south. Uh, I don't know that anybody has been defined as that one throat to choke if something goes south. Um, on the meantime, then it should be a roach until you get somebody. I'm serious. I, I'm not. I'm not being, somebody has to. Somebody has to be the leader of this thing yeah. until you see the right people. Right now, so I, okay. Right, well, well, that's you can put it in our notes. Just you know, any discuss. Let's talk about this uh, recommendation here. To be discussion. I wish the uh, the, the recommended list that. Oh yeah, I got a lot of questions on. Okay. <laughs> let's let's first off is uh, when this black slab thing was brought up months ago. I said, "What well, uh, you know? Why does the building department look at this? We're we're told we need to put black slabs down for the groundwater. Now that 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 um, that courtyard has been there for what seventy years. We haven't really had a water problem until now." But now we need two hundred thousand dollars worth of block slabs to fix a water problem that just appeared, and I, I just don't want to put that money into it until somebody from the building department looks at this and says this is what's causing the problem. Because supposing we do this and it doesn't fix the problem, we got to come back and take another shot at it. When you say building department, you mean public building? The, uh, um, PVC. Yeah. PVC. Yeah. Okay, that's one problem I got. Hey, did they ever say that this groundwater was like caused by the new construction or anything? Or has, has anything ever been said? Um, you know, to your point, if, if, if that's what I asked and didn't get an answer, they were yeah. gonna look into it. And yeah. it's still here and nobody seems to have an answer. I, I would have to turn yeah. some facilities. I just didn't care. The, the next thing I got a problem with is the um the Willard Dallas blocks. Now these things have been on the roof for seven years. So we're to expect to spend seventy thousand dollars to fix this uh, solar system every seven years. No, this was um I guess you parallel you probably draw would be the, the foundation problems in Eastern Ben. If there were defects with these blocks that is causing them to deteriorate that shouldn't have taken place. I know facilities received a letter from from the manufacturer, so they're trying to work through that piece of it. So they're really looking to replace, they're taking some money they have left over to try to address Willard in the short term as much as they can um, to try to get as many of these changed. The, the part of this money is also going to the fact that you have to boom it up, and you have to boom it in different places because of the, the weight they can't just, you know, it's not like shingles or something where they can boom a whole set and then move them around the roof. They would, Probably go through the roof if they put all that weight in one spot. So there's 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 setup 
costs and other things in there. The expectation is once these are replaced with quality, um, which is what they're actively working to do, that we wouldn't have this problem like we did. Well, my, my question with that would be, has the town authority been contacted about this? We have looked and there's the possibility, but seven years in, I mean, one of the things is you're only gonna get a small fraction somehow, even, even if we were to, to win, um, you're going, to, you're going to look at, if you've used it for seven years, there will be some deterioration in that quality. That is definitely something uh, that we want to look at, but the immediate need was to try to ensure safety so that these don't, in worst case scenario, blow off the roof. Okay. The school vans. I'm glad you, Mr. When Jim talks, we'll talk about the school vans. I have a question about those. I have nothing to do with school vans. You have nothing to do with those. They're handled I, through New Britain Transportation. I maintain two vehicles for the Board of Education, a box truck and a, a uh, supervisor for the police, the Board of Education Police Department. That's the only thing I do. I do not have anything to do with buses, vans, or any of that. Stuff. You may recall during the budget season, there was a, an aging chart, um, several vans, well over 100,000 miles. And those are the ones that are looking to replace. There's a four year schedule, and this was trying to fund year one of that. No, I, I understand that. I, I know the mileage is high on the vans. I just know that Jim's out and about a lot and, and knows a lot of people. And I, I couldn't see why you, you, well, obviously, if you're not a charger, you have nothing to do with it now. But um, I'm sure there's plenty of lease return vans that would fit the needs of what they're looking for with certainly certain, less than 50,000 miles on. We could. You know, save save some money on, but I would. I know that one of the previous people that ran the board of education used to buy all the vehicles from Hertz because they would get them off of uh, the rental vehicles. I don't know what they're doing at this point. That makes now that makes sense. That's what I'm talking about. Some you know, you get the vans that Hertz rents the nine passenger vans. We certainly could save a lot of money getting them. Through there and run them 150,000 miles still. I don't, I don't know what they're pursuing or what's going on. But do you even mind? So I would only be guessing and talking on my book because I don't know. But yeah. we have had a number of vehicles, and you can attest to the fact that over the last couple of years, there have been a number of instances where purchasing new is the same or sometimes even less expensive than to use. Right. Uh, you just had that with the Kubota where you said I, it's actually lower cost for me to buy a new one than to buy a used one. Yeah. And Certain vehicles, like um, we just purchased, well, we didn't just purchase, we purchased a van for um, facilities department, and we were provided money to purchase a used van for facilities department. Well, with the with the COVID and the shortages and everything else, the used vans and the new vans were the same price. So um, the, you, you got to look around. Yeah, um, yeah. If, we're, if we're spending 140,000 for three of them, we're only spending 46,000. So it's not either, either these aren't very big vans or they, they're not uh, typically they're, they're, they're huge vans. It also will vary because some of them will be lift to help with kids with yeah. wheelchairs, which would be significantly more expensive, and some would right. then be less expensive. This was trying to look at the average. Um, I mean, my, my head is more on if they have surplus in their. Why'd you right now tell them not to spend 160000 or whatever, 140000 and pay for that Board of Education? I mean, they should, if they have surplus, before they go out and spend it all, and they have a right to tell us how they're going to spend it so that we can say, oh, buy some capital too. You know, I mean, they, you know, right, right, right. there's got to be some compromise here with these people. Sure. You know, yeah. so tell right. them that they should be taking their surplus and applying it to these. This is kind of what's got me in that direction. We're spending a lot of money above and beyond the regular board of ed budget for board of ed items. And nobody ever seems to take that into account. Okay. Any other questions? Um, Mine is just a general one, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So looking at this, I mean, I, I guess who made the decision that these are the right items? And, I'm, and what level of analysis goes in to say that these are cost-effective things to do versus the other items? I mean, what was the original list, like $2.8 million, whatever? 
Well, are these are these some wish lists that surfaced and got approval by a couple of people? No. Would everybody who had other items on the list agree that these no, are this, the, isn't this first section the whole no, million plus the eight. original was two point eight. No, well, no, this, no, this, this, this is section million eight. Oh, I know, I know, but there's other things on yeah. the list. Oh, yeah. We never scrutinized the list to say that this one point one million dollars were the right things relative to the two point eight. Well, yes, we did it, because we, we we talked about putting the million eighty into our budget. All right, you and, actually and, did. And so we that. never, we put it we never, we never went down the entire list and scrutinized. Well, we put it in. No, not yes, we not, not, no, not he, he this talking list. beyond the first. Beyond the oh, second. Second. We said we said we would look at those, but this list here is the million eighty, and then he added on four more items. And, and, and I'm saying there's another million dollars worth of capital things that were originally put on the list. I'm just asking a question as. What makes us know that these are the ones that are more important than any of those, or that have a higher payback or return on investment, or add more to the, you know, have a, a better overall, if it's not even a return on investment, good to the good to the town type of thing? Well, I would agree with you for the last four items, but we did make a decision on the first million eight. The way the capital that yeah, I, you you said my point, there was another million dollars. We didn't we didn't scrutinize this. This list That's here, this 1.8 million to the up the whole 2.8. He said so what was presented you by the top groupings. Yeah. And you can go through and, and we didn't go through that too. analysis. The way, the way it works is everybody, we, we start with last year's capital plans. Every department head who is seeking capital puts their items on the list in terms of the year, when can they get it? Like Jim is going to have vehicles that he needs, but he's also going to look and say, it's not feasible for me to buy. Eight vehicles, even though I may need eight vehicles across various departments, I'm not going to be able to get all eight of them. So let me figure out what I could actually do this year and the next year and on out. You take that whole list together, and then the group comes together and talks about each of the elements. And that's where we tried to prioritize. And you saw the four groupings so that those who are closest to it can kind of advocate for uh, one uh, need. And, and typically, the first and highest element would be safety. That might be police or fire vehicles for public safety or something that's broken. And for safety reasons, like when we looked at the water leaking into the school, we're not looking to create a mold situation. Town already lived through that with McGee, and we don't want to recreate that. So it's, that's sort of number one. And then you start to look at more general things like education would be very high on the list if it's, if it's able to go there. And so we kind of look at those pieces. We also look at availability. There were things that Jim took off. There were things that some other people took off and said, this project's important. Um, you know, Steve Wood can't do four field projects in a single year. So they have to be prioritized. And that's sort of how we, we started to go through some of those things. I tell you that, for example, the Willard School ended up below little people, in part because at the time we were talking, the Willard School administration and the PTO, traditionally, they would come together and talk about what it is they need, what they'd like to see and, and develop a strategy. At the time, that had not been done. And so the decision was before, until that gets done, there's no point in putting that higher on the list when we could go out now and potentially this year, replace and upgrade little people. So little people went higher for that. So there's a lot of back and forth to try to figure out the best way to spend it. And then this year, what we tried to do was, was group it in those four groups so it would be easier for you to, to see how the staff look at it. That doesn't mean um, you necessarily have to fund it. The idea here, just like last year, you said, well, I agree with the fire vehicle, but I only want to fund 50% of it. And we'll come back in two years when we get the vehicle and we'll do that. So if there's items, you know, I mentioned a couple of you, if there's items that should should be on here, whether they're I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not questioning the items on here. Yeah. I'm just questioning what type of process goes through, yeah. what type of analytical analysis is done, is any return on investment done? Like, for example, and I know this is a ridiculous example, okay? <laughs> and, and it seems extremely obvious to do the large truck body replacement, okay? Seems intuitive, whatever, whatever. But what level of analysis was done? Let's say, let's say we're not going to do anything. We're going to run them out. Okay, we're going to run them off four years and four years we're going to buy new trucks and whatever, whatever. What's the 10 year life cost on that? I, I can tell you a case in point. Okay, mm -hmm. this goes back a ways. This is when the police department needed to put the plexiglass doors on the thing because 
all the overtime they were paying, paying right? And that cost them, I don't know what the money was, but a lot of money. I, I did a back, of, at the time, I did a back of the envelope calculation on that. You realize the payback was 20 years. And this was, and, and they did that during a time when they weren't, had any inkling whatsoever whether they were going to build a new police department in 10 years or not. So that, you know, and that was like, the, the alternative was do nothing and pay the overtime. And for, frankly, on a 10 year payback schedule, that would have been the right thing to do, not what they did. And that's the only thing I'm trying to get at. Yeah. What do we do? We look at types of things like that and, and make good, sound, analytical judgments. Now, everything you can't do that. Some of these things like you, you're not going to you're not going to get a return on investment, per se, on little people's playground. There are other factors that come in. Community well-being, safety is a huge one too. Yeah. You know, so you, but you can develop some parameters around that thing and put weighting factors on them, and people can come in with some basic level of analysis on their thing. Say, here's my project, and here's its score based on these factors. And that's actually what we, what what's in the spreadsheet is actually okay. a scoring of that. All right. I use Jim's as an example when he went through. The analysis ultimately what you had was a vehicle that or vehicles that have very limited extended life because of the body you're looking at the cost of one new vehicle but with the body replacement you're getting three that have at least a 10 year if not longer life so looking at that it made sense to say we can keep three vehicles on the road for the cost of purchasing one and losing two of those vehicles so that ended up high on the list. The other piece that's involved there was the timing. We know that there is, e even today, even though we're past COVID or whatever, there's still a lag. And so we also wanted to take a look at what are we funding today so that we can make sure whether it's next winter or if it's the following winter. We did that with the fire truck last year. And you said, you know, put 50% so we can at least get it on order because it's two years. And if we wait longer, it's going to be three, four years. And, and those are really valiant, you know. And those are, those are all the factors that we try to consider. When I sit and look at this list, I don't see any of that stuff. Not that I should be the judge of it. I just want to understand the process. I mean, we have to make sure there is a process. Oh, yeah. We have a lot underneath it. We can certainly share. I, I try to keep it from being really messy, but I mean, Jim, I, I Spoke for you, I guess. I don't know if there's anybody you want to say. Uh, but I mean, this was part of the process that well, you were originally going to be in, and yeah. somehow we didn't make it. So I guess my our message is: well, I think we'd we, like to understand it. I think better. the whole board of finance should be involved with it personally. I, I agree. I, I don't see. I think it should be a meeting of the whole board of finance. So one one year. possibility, because this seems to be back burner every year, is. We can go through our process as staff, and we typically do that around October, November timeframe. And maybe it's worthwhile having a joint board of finance council meeting to really ask questions. And maybe it's two or three meetings, not in a week or whatever, but in advance of the budget season to yeah, say, hey, would, would, that way it's not the thing that we immediately cut at the end because, you know, I was having a conversation. knows what's going on. What's that? Then everybody. Well, oh, then you have advocates for you too, you know. Well, I mean, I said to somebody yesterday, what always what always confuses me is capital. To me, is one of the things that most directly benefits <laughs> residents. You put little people in there. That's something residents look at. Well, I paid my taxes, and I ended up with this playground. You may like it or hate it, but at least you can point to it. Or when the the stage one was redone, the town went from I'll call it less than Berlin softball field to a great softball field. Like you could look at that and say, that's what I had. And my only argument is like, we have 50 things to do and we can only afford to do 25 of them. Are we doing the right 25? Yeah. That's that's my only question. I, I, I don't know. I'm not saying we're not. I'm not mm -hmm. saying you guys don't do that. I no. just like to understand. But we can also process bring it. A little better. We can bring it. I mean, if we, if, you, if we did that approach and then had two or three of those nights, there could be a board of ed night. Where you could have that to really dig into those things from facilities, but also, you know, it's a Jeff Kugno, it's the superintendent. What do we have and why? There could be other aspects. It could be a vehicle night, it could be other stuff. To, to, I'm not trying to have needs, not of one, but maybe that's a better approach. It's, it's not a good idea. I mean, I think that it's not a great idea to have one person sitting there asking all the questions for everybody. It's just not yeah. a good idea because everybody's going to have yeah. different questions. Everybody doesn't think the same. So, and it may make your march a lot easier by having these meetings yeah. in advance. And um, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Do. Like George is asking, just a, an example is the truck bodies. I understand it because that's, I, I mean, I'm in, I, I 
who's in that business for years, and I know what Jim's talking about. You know how many municipal auctions you go to where the trucks have no mileage on them, mm -hmm. but the bodies are rotted out, so the, 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 the municipalities are selling these things on pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. So to come up with an idea to well, put I, new bodies on yeah, it. So, but I'm just saying, I know, this example, I, I or I understand it's, it's a very so simple point. It, it might not translate over you. Process. you. You have different life experience than me, and George, everybody has different experiences. So they're going to have different questions that I'm going to have. I'm good with that. I wouldn't even, I would, I, I would be, okay, cool. Yeah. But you, you have a different life experience. So, you know, why are we doing this instead of doing this? I understand that, you know, so it's better to have a joint meeting where everybody's on the same page. Okay, I mean, I'm, I mean, I have a difference of opinion, but, you know, I mean, even if we put two of our people in, you know, their, their meetings, I mean, we got to depend on other people to help us too. I don't think all of us have to be in it, you know what I'm saying? I just, you know, you know, you got to look at, you guys are involved. Give us your recommendations or your opinion and stuff like that. And that's why you're there. But, and we can talk as you get into the yeah. fall, how you want to handle the budget. Talk we can talk whatever you guys want But overall, I mean, I guess the question I have is uh, how do we feel about the list? I mean, we first item, Kevin, we want we need some more information on. We're, we're at you know on the slabs. The uh, school vans, we'd like to ask the Board of Education to you know fund it. Okay, if you can communicate to them quickly that don't spend all your money. Um, Maybe too late. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, and then um, how does everyone feel about the rest of the list and the total results? I'm asking this. This isn't a challenge. I just have a question on the Timberland stuff. Yeah. How does their capital surcharge on green fees come into paying for stuff like this? Um, it typically has been handling um, smaller capital right. items, so uh, clearing tree areas. Um, I'm trying to think, there's so it covers a lot of the stuff they do, but not the bigger items. Not the bigger items. It right. potentially could down the line, but um, the other piece I would say on the Timberland on course bridges is I did get approval from OPM for that. Lots of money can be used, so we could supplement some of the town money potentially use a LOSA grant from OPM and uh, try to take care of all seven bridges, put that, just put that safety to, to bed. They have been meeting about a few different designs. Originally, it was going to be you know, 500,000. Now it looks like it might be down closer to more like two, 250, plus maybe some engineering costs. So maybe a combination of some local money and some LOSA funds. Um, I mean, from a financial perspective, George, you know, if you look at the revenue against expenditures, they're plus up, they're plus 174,000. I know. So they're, I, they're major, I, I the know. capital is basically, they're throwing in 174,000 to cover some of that capital. Yeah, I just wanted to know how it works. Yeah, I think yeah, I'm yeah. going to play golf. I paid two bucks for yeah. <laughs> capital fee. It was originally put in place to do the irrigation upgrades and sand traps, and then they kept going. Going and going, I was curious as okay. well. But I can tell you, well. every one of those dollars is put immediately into a separate fund. It's not in the general right. funds, it's, it's its own separate fund. That's a question I always get. And they, it's always they spend been, most of it each year. Um, I think it varies. A couple of years where we had some hurricanes come through with damage, they spent a little bit more than they had. Other years, they had a little less. And I, I was talking to them the other day, and they're in a position like so many other departments where. They're, the two greens mowers that they have right now are very old, and there's a year and a half lead time on ordering oh, to getting them. So it's it's like they're already having trouble finding parts for the ones that they have now. So I I, I know they're going to be coming to us, you know, with this, you know, we, like we did last year when they had a profit, we sort of reallocated some of it and. Uh, I know they're going to be coming to us, you know, with that again. So, but I didn't, I didn't realize the time lag for that kind of equipment was the same, you know, that we have with fire trucks and everything else. It seems it's getting better, <laughs> is it? It's slowly getting better. So, could oh, go ahead. I was just asking if I could speak for a minute. Sure. Sure. So, on the dump bodies, uh, so those trucks are are built mid two thousands. 2006, 2007. They are Peterbilt heavy duty trucks, which really facilitates this whole thing. 
because that cab is an aluminum cab okay. and it is a truck construction truck cab and not what I call a pickup truck cab. So if you had a, uh, an international or a freight liner, those cabs are mainly built like a pickup truck cab where this is built huck bolted together. It's a heavy duty cab. Um, those are pre um, EPA DEF trucks. So that means that there's a lot of sensors that are not on that engine, which means that they are an easier engine to work. And they also have a better longevity because they don't have the heat or they don't have a lot of the other emission stuff on it that they're finding now is killing these trucks. The bodies on them have been repaired by the shop. We have cut them apart and repaired them and everything else. They are our last three trucks that have a carbon steel body on them. Um, everything else has a stainless steel body. With a, my plan is, is that to take these three trucks, put the bodies on them. They will be all stainless steel bodies. They will be all upgraded. And then these three trucks will last to 2035. So when you get when you look for your investment and your payback, you're talking that these trucks will probably be um, 45, 50 years old when they're ready to go. The components, the other components that we look at on those trucks, you know, the axles and the braking systems and the transmissions and the engines, those are still components that are readily available in the truck industry. And it's not unusual for a private company, a private construction company to rebuild their trucks, much like we're trying to rebuild. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. You saw the um, earlier tonight, I think you transferred money for Poly Sanders. So with those trucks, now those are F550s, Fords, we rebuilt the cabs on them, all new floors, uh, cab mounts, um, rocker panels, all that, all was done in-house in the garage by the mechanics. Um, we took the bodies, because the bodies were a four season body, which means they, they have a built-in sander and everything else. And we're finding that on a carbon steel body with a built-in sander, that they rust a lot easier because they have a lot more pockets for the salt to sit where you can't get to it. And once it gets in there, then it starts, you can't you never get to it and it just, it's cancer. So we took those bodies off and we put on a straight dump body or a mason body that doesn't have the openings where the uh, material falls down in these little slots. We had some sanders laying around. We put those sanders in there. Unfortunately, those sanders use more um, flow than what we had on there before. Brought an expert in, worked with the expert. He says, you know, you got to come up, you got to put a bigger reservoir on there and you got to put uh, bigger pumps on there. So we looked at that whole thing and we did, okay, if we took this truck, and we put the tanks on, we put the pumps on and re-engineered the hydraulic systems if we can get it to work. And I say that because we were now working on trucks that are 2015, 2016. Do they make the kits to put those pumps on? Because you can't go off a PTO pump on that. Or, or do we look at upgrading the sanders to a poly sander? So a poly sander would be a plastic sander. We wouldn't have those problems with rust on it. We would have, um, we would have an electric motor on it. We wouldn't have the problem with the hydraulic systems. And we would have the sander that we could then later take and put onto the new truck. So which one is more feasible? Do we put the money into the chassis, add the pump and the tank and everything else, and then have to replace the truck anyway because it's already 15 years old? Or do we look to the future? So those are some of the analysis that that we do at the shop, and then you know, sitting with the other supervisors, okay. where we're going and how we're going. What's the best way for us to go? And I mean, there there is this thing because all this stuff is expensive that we just want to spend money. Well, it's my money. I live in town. I don't want to spend money. I am known as the pack rat. <laughs> Remember what you said, the number five things up, because that's what you just described. <laughs> you know, so that, that's why we're rebuilding trucks. And it just, I think it's smarter in the end. All the stainless steel trucks, 
if I'm still there, um, the, when those chassis are up, you'll be able to take those bodies off and put them on new bodies, new chassis. You'll be able to, it, you aren't, aren't going to save millions, but you're going to be able to save because you invested in them going down the road. That's, that's where I come from. Okay. I going down the list quickly. You've got the, the district wide camera upgrades. This is going to be ongoing as we go, just because there's so many cameras around for security reasons, and we just have to continue to keep up. Um, not that it necessarily be this high ongoing, but you have some of the originals from VHS trying to integrate those into the same type of cameras, which just allows technology to integrate better. The bridges we talked a little bit about resurfacing the basketball and tennis courts. That's at VHS. This needs to be done every seven years to maintain our warranty of the surface that's there. Um, so we're up on that seven year piece. Tim talked about the ballast block replacement at Willard, the highway pickup truck. I don't know if you want to say anything about that. <laughs> yeah. Again, the highway pickup truck is a carbon steel truck and it has got a lot of miles on it, it's used for plowing. Um, I can tell you that it's coming in this this year. It's been identified as needing floors, needing cab mounts, and needing rockers. Um, because even if we were to, even if you were to give me the money right now, could I find one at a high price? Yes, I could find one at a high price. Would it be would it be a construction truck? It'd be a fluffy truck. I call them fluffy trucks. You know, they got rug in them, stereos. Not a construction truck. Um, we are hoping that. It'll be funded. We were then going to take that truck and we're still going to rebuild it to get through winter and then it's not going to go anywhere. It'll be downgraded to spare and the new truck will be going that replacement. Um, okay. There's a progression. Up for 65 grand. That's four wheel drive, too. Four wheel drive, yes. But that's, that's with uh, that's with pricing from government that we're hopefully will be able to continue. Um, they actually say the market's going to crash. If you if you look at some of the uh, people that are out there that look at and analyze all these markets and everything, they say the vehicle market's going to crash. That it, it, it's a bubble that had, they created before COVID, mm -hmm. and it's going to crash. And a lot of the manufacturers are now in trouble. Big time. Um. The, the police motors is continuation last year. We had done the MBTs, which were kind of a couple of the laptops in the cars. These motors are, are the communication device between headquarters and, um, and vehicles. The police vehicles, you know, we, we, a few years ago, the town fell behind. And at one point, there was one year where the town actually bought six vehicles to catch up. The idea behind it is to replace, are we still on three vehicles a year, Jim? Mm -hmm. yes. So this is trying to continue at that pace and not fall back behind. That's especially important as the number of police officers goes up. Um, the town clerk, assessor, vault office renovations, like I said, they have vital records that are just physically running out of space. This would be for architectural um, vault work and things of that nature to try to at least get the project going and started. Replace equipment at Little People's Playground. This was the playground of selected. And then the traction machine I mentioned before about getting around and clearing the sidewalks, stairs, and those kinds of things. The only thing I would say, I don't know, Mark has that, that was three cruisers for 200,000 or that's four? That's three cruisers. We got one cruiser from the state. So there's so, three, three cruisers with equipment. With equipment. With equipment is 200 grand. Okay. Yeah, Actually, if you were to take that police cruiser and just completely put everything into it, build it out now, it's about $76,000. Just nuts. Mark, any comments from you at all? I got plenty, but I'm gonna hold on to them for a little bit. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's other. So you want you want to take the bands off the list, and I'll go back and tell them. Or no. I, <laughs> do you want to take the maybe sort of top? Do you want to take the two hundred thousand off at this point? Well, or? if someone wants to take something off, they should take, make a motion to take it off. I mean, you're not really doing well, no, well, the files and there's really follow up questions on that. That's all. The vans, we would like to, the Board of Education, fund it, but if they can't fund it, we wouldn't take it off necessarily. Okay, so no. 
And, and you know, another small thing, but it, it's the same thing George says, it's busting things out, but just crack snow machine for $80,000. I understand it's real nice and convenient and everything. But if we bought it last year for eighty thousand dollars, we're shutting that shed all winter. So it's just a piece of equipment that's going to sit in the shed in case it snows for eighty thousand dollars. I'm in favor of taking that off. If, if I just we haven't had a bad winter of any years, maybe we'll have a bad winter and we'll have to deal with one track machine for one winter. But the way winters are going around here, I can't see put eighty thousand dollars in a shed. Doesn't this list have to go to the council? Yeah, this us. was designed just like last year to get your input. That way, um, if there's something like you had mentioned, taking cut the fire vehicle and it happens, and we'll do the deposit. That way, we can go to council and, and uh, speed up the process because the idea would be council has one meeting before the August break. You would have a meeting at the beginning of August and then operate for a month. There's an opportunity for us to do the transfers, get the money in place. I think our financials off to the auditors, um, but that, that's the that's the idea behind it. Trying to wait as long as possible to have the best visibility into the numbers, but also get it out there so we can try to move. Mark, it sounds like we're getting near the end. If you have comments, <laughs> you are holding. Nope, nope, I'm good. Okay, okay. I hear you, Tim. But I don't know if I hear correctly. No, I know, but do we want to spend eight thousand dollars to put it in the shed? I hear you. Would you put one in the shed for your driveway? But I have a snowblower in my shed. No, I understand that. <laughs> but you only have one snowblower. You don't have a spare one to do your front yard and one for your front walk and one for your back walk. Well, this is also designed to help, especially with the schools, get them cleared and opened as quickly as possible. Um, I mean, my Woody's crew will get them open. It's just timing. <laughs> and you know the track machine, the current track machine is probably seven, eight, nine years old, somewhere around there. I don't have that information. Yeah. I, I want to. I want to come talk about dump trucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you were all good there. If, if it's seven or eight years old, it's, it's probably got no hours on it, or it's low. Probably. It's just that's just the nature of living in Southern New England. It's... Okay. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I took my own ran up and down the walk. Motion and I four. I move to approve transfer of forty thousand dollars from the general fund parks and grounds accounts, electricity funding, maintenance and repair, and blue collar personnel to the principal soccer field improvement account in the CNR fund, Capital Laundry Fund. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Five. Move to approve a transfer of thirty thousand dollars from the storm-related overtime account in the general fund to the snow equipment account from the capital non-recurring fund to purchase Fisher polycaster sanders. Second. As, as previously discussed. <laughs> Second. Second. Discussion. You think so? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Kevin? Um, I'll, I'll go quickly through finance update. Good year from a, a receipts standpoint. Um, tax revenue continues to be strong collection. Uh, expenditures did come in under budget uh, again this year, and we continue to look at those for opportunities next year. Both the insur health insurance and general insurance funds are solid. They are in, in good position relative to where we would target them to be, which um, it's always a good place to be. I know, Jerry, you've mentioned in the past that having those stronger means there's less pressure on the general fund on a sign fund balance. So that's always a good thing. The pension fund is as solid as it's probably been maybe ever. I don't know. Um, we did pay out our former deputy chief. So there are three active members of this plan. They're all leadership in the police department. And um, so they are active. We do have one vested inactive person, somebody left the town many years ago. And finally, after numerous attempts, he has responded to the town and is looking to take his money. That's only about $80,000, so it's going to go away the plan. But um, we did have, unfortunately, another beneficiary pass away. So we are down to 12 retirees or beneficiaries. So three actives, one inactive vested who will be leaving soon, and 12. Um, so at that point, um, 
we're in good shape. You know, in terms of what's at, at Empower, it's about 50% funded, but overall there's money that employees have contributed over through the years that gets moved as the payout happens. We're 93.5% funded in that plan. So that is by any measure a well-funded, strong plan right there. Um, a number of projects are ongoing. Fort Bridge Rehab is in late stages, hopefully getting completed. The sidewalk upgrades will be seen in front of uh, Lyon Billard, as well as down on Langdon. Um, so that, that's pretty far along. School scoreboard is essentially done. There's a couple of bills there, but that's why it's not 100%. And the work will be moving over to the Scaglio for that project that the former speaker was able to uh, bring. Um, Percival Field will be moving along as well. Thank you for approving that additional money to go over tonight, uh, which will help with that project. Kensington Road Bridge is far along in the design phase and eventually will move to construction. So hopefully the three row project will be completed before you start going to one lane on Kensington Road by the post office when that bridge is replaced. And then um, work is going to be kicking off and, and kind of moving through on 55 Steel Boulevard the final the third phase that Newport Group had for some of the, that's the residential building there across from the train station. Um, VNA, it landed, what are we expecting in terms of revenue? We've been talking for a while about you know, 250 to $300,000 shortfall in the revenue. They did, when you look at the PL, save a little bit on the expenditures just because of the fact that while well, they were prudent with it, as well as lower volume met lower nursing costs. Um, while not where everybody had hoped it would land the first time in several years, we did see the revenue go up year over year. $20,000 is still positive versus the negative trend we were seeing. But I think, for the record, the, the, um, the loss on for the year is not, not much different than last year's loss. So everybody was saying we're going to improve this year. It's almost the same loss. So. Um, we got to start saying, you know, it's, you know, that, we have a year behind us now. We got to see what we're going to do this year. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other thing I'll bring up is Sal and I were talking earlier. earlier. So I, I think we're going to need an August meeting, but I don't think it's extensive unless we want it to be or something surprises us, um, hopefully to approve some capital so we can move forward on those. And there may be a couple of additional over budget items I can bring. So I don't know if you guys want to move the August meeting to remote only and just take care of it and then be at home. Um, oh, you're going to be out of town. So I'm going to be out of state. I'm okay with remote. Yeah, actually, we'll just stop wrong. It's going to be a quick meeting. Yeah. Can we move it to the third, third Tuesday? Um, I guess we could. I, it's up to you guys. I don't know what your schedule looks like. Sure. Uh, it's fine with me. Just trying to see what date there is. Tuesday. Third Tuesday. That would be the fifteenth. Uh, Thank you. Can we switch it? That that will make it a special meeting, so we wouldn't be able to adjust the agenda. But I don't. Okay. So you want to move it to eight fifteen, seven p.m. remote only. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's going to be just transfers? Should be just transfers, unless there's a big surprise at the next council meeting that you have to deal with at the meeting. But I, I don't think anything's coming. Anybody wants anything? Okay. All right. A motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. 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 Fair. Aye. All right. Thank you. Very good. Not Thank you. Oops.